we read about <coughs> we cannot serve two masters, no? We cannot serve God, and at the same time, <coughs> we cannot serve mammon. Uh, someone has asked me a question, Pastor, what is mammon? I said, mammon. <laughs> representing, in other words, representing anything that is uh, material. No? So as far as God is concerned, gusto niya siya lang. Amen? Amen. Uh -huh. That's why we pointed out last uh, Sunday about our responsibility to honor the Lord with our substance and also with the first fruits of our, of our increase. No? And that is actually not negotiable because, uh, because our duty natin is to honor, honor the Lord. I mentioned about also I also mentioned about living below, no? Our means. I, uh, sana lahat tayo matutunan. I have my, I have a personal experience, no? But uh, I would not like to remember that because at one time we went to Makati, okay? And I need a, uh, I need a sandal. Okay, and we went to, uh, I don't know what mall is that in Makati, no? And we found, huh? Yeah, that's it. Uh, and we found one. Okay. Um, Mrs. Ed Pau and also Caleb, I think it was Caleb, no? Insisted that I will take that. Uh -huh. So I took it. But when I brought it to the uh, counter, no, ang halaga ay 6,000 pesos. <laughs> oh, 6,000, isang sandal ka ko. Uh -oh. But we have not, I did not have the choice anymore. I, ha, I had to buy it kasi nakakaya naman dun sa, no, sa counter. Daladala ka dito, <laughs> tapos... Pero alam niyo, alam niyo mga patid, I, I hated that sandal. Yeah. At hindi ko sinusuot. Uh -huh. Kasi it always reminds me that I spent money uh, that was not necessary. So when I went to uh, Israel, Bumili po ako ng 25 shekels na sandal. Parang ano pa siya, ang ganda pa niya. Ang 25 shekels is only about 300. Sabi ko, yun ang sinusot ko ngayon. Oo. Kasi ayaw kong tignan talaga yung ano. Ayaw kong tignan niya. Totoo talaga, ayaw kong tignan. Oo. Can you imagine 6,000 pesos? Well, that's part of our uh, good and faithful stewardship in life. Okay? Uh, salamat ano, na nireview mo lahat. I don't need to review all the sermons. But if ever you miss the sermons every Friday, I think you have it in YouTube. Okay? If you are following your sermons so YouTube, I, every Friday you have it, okay? So that uh, if ever you plan to be absent. <laughs> okay, pwede kang manood na lang, pwede kang makinig na lang sa YouTube, no? Pero don't ever plan to be absent. Okay, let's turn to Nehemiah chapter 13. Last Sunday, we mentioned about our responsibility to honor the Lord with our substance and, all, and the first fruits of our increase. And uh, as uh, we pointed out, this is a command. And if it is a command, 
according to Solomon, the, the only duty of man is to fear the Lord and also obey His commands. It's only our duty. No? But uh, if we fail on this, kung sakaling uh, we fail on honoring the Lord, mga kapatid, well, the consequence is far-reaching. Mm -hmm. Because it does not only affect our lives, but it also affects the kingdom of God. And that's something serious as far as we are concerned. Na? Does not, hindi lamang tayo po ang affected. If ever we fail to honor the Lord with our substance, we are not the only ones affected as believers. And a lot of believers are suffering the consequence. Sana maligtas po tayo sa consequence na yun, no? But most of all, kung tayo, we are so serious about our God, not only ourselves are affected according to the Bible, but also the kingdom of God is affected. Okay? And this afternoon, I would like to, if you have your Bibles, would like to uh, turn your Bibles to the book of Nehemiah. I mentioned about last Sunday, as to the failure during the time of Malachi, right? Remember that? When uh, during that time, God was, uh, make, uh, was expressing his complaint and saying to the people of Israel, I, I have lost my honor as far as your stewardship is concerned. So that he was asking, he said, where is my honor? This afternoon, I would like us to, I would like you to refer to the contemporary of uh, Malachi. And uh, if you look into the book of Nehemiah, you find that particular time recorded in Nehemiah chapter 13. And this afternoon, we would like us to uh, pay attention to one particular verse. How we wish we could, uh, we have time to read the entire, the entire <coughs> passage. Now, beginning from, from chapter 13, verse 4, actually, we want to tackle until verse 22. But we do not have time. But this afternoon, gusto kong tingnan ninyo po yung verse, ano, verse 11. Because it was during this failure when the children of Israel failed to render honor to the Lord as far as their substance and also their first, first fruits are concerned, that this happened during the time. Okay? So that I mentioned that if ever we fail, beloved, it does not only affect our lives, but it, it also affects the, the kingdom of God. Okay? I want you to take note of uh, verse 11 of chapter 13. Now, let me give you a little background of Nehemiah chapter 13. Remember Nehemiah, no? He was able to uh, build uh, the walls. And then after building the walls, he called the people for the dedication of the walls, and at the same time, uh, all the people signed the covenant, promising the Lord, okay, to keep uh, everything that was recorded in the laws of Moses. And if you look into chapter 10, there, uh, there are several things that are mentioned in the covenant that they signed. And then after that, after that uh, celebration and dedication on the part of the people, Nehemiah left. And between chapter 10 and chapter 13, the span of time ay 12 years na po ang nagdaan. 
Okay? When uh, it was necessary again for Nehemiah to ask permission from Persia to return to Jerusalem because may problema ulit ang Jerusalem. Okay? And the first place that he went to when he reached Jerusalem, if you look at verse 11, was the house of God. Okay? And uh, kung tinan po niyo yung verse 11, I, Nehemiah has a very striking question addressed to the people of Israel during this particular time. Okay? Ano yung kanyang tanong dyan? Sabi niya, why is the house of God forsaken? Okay? Why is the house of God forsaken? I think, beloved, if you are a true believer in Christ, okay, you cannot deny it that your life is closely related to the house of God. Uh -huh. The relationship ay hindi mo pwedeng paghiwalayin if you are a true believer in Christ. Okay? So that <clears throat> when Nehemiah learned that there was a uh, there was a problem in the land as far as God's people are concerned. Uh, he knew that the, the real problem lies in the house of God. And so the first thing he did in order to analyze the situation, why the land was under curse, according to the book of Malachi, was to go into the house of God. Okay? And three surprise, if you look at uh, verse 11, ay sabi dyan, ano na nangyari dito sa house ng Panginoon? It's forsaken, he said. And to the Nehemiah, the reason why the land was under, under curse during that time was because of what happened to the house of God. And during that time, it was for second. In other words, when Nehemiah went to the house of God, there were several signs inside the temple that, that it was for second. Okay? And so what he did was to analyze in chapter 13 why the house of God is, is for second. And this afternoon, we would like to uh, sabayan natin po si Nehemiah in his trying to analyze the problem why the house of God is forsaken. Okay? At uh, in the Old Testament, yung, uh, yung uh, temple or the house of God represented God's kingdom during that time. But in our time, wala na po tayong ano. We don't have the temple. Although, as far as Jerusalem is concerned, or as far as Israel is concerned, they are planning to rebuild the temple. Kasi, ang, alam, ang sa kanila po ay the entire relationship, their entire relationship with God, totally centered around the temple. Okay? But in our case, at, the, at this very moment, I, ano, I, wala, wala na yung temple. Walang temple tayo. Pero mayroon tayong ano, another temple, the church. The house of the living God. Okay? And so yung, yung uh, symbol ng, ating, ng kingdom ng Diyos po sa ating panahon ngayon is being represented by the church. That's why Jesus said, I will build my church. Okay? And so let's... Uh, this afternoon, we would like to follow Nehemiah as he tried to analyze the problem why the house of God was forsaken. And in the same manner also, we believe, beloved, that if ever 
the church is forsaken, it is because of the failure of God's people to honor the Lord. Okay? Okay, tinan natin ngayon si Nehemiah, okay? And so he went first of all to the temple and he, he noticed that, sabi niya, it's forsaken. Now, the first thing that he did in order to uh, know why the temple was forsaken and we would like to make it contemporary with our uh, situation now in the New Testament, the first place that he went to was the parsonage. Okay? And what's the, the, what's the parsonage for? It is to house what? Who? God's servants. Okay? In the Old Testament, in the temple, there was also the house that will that would house all the servants of the Lord, the Levites, and all those who served in the temple. Okay? So he went to the personage, and to his surprise, okay, uh, tinan po ninyo yung ano, verse 10. Let's, you go back to verse 10. And I also realized that the portions for the Levites the ones who were serving the house of God had not been given them for each of the Levites and the singers and who did the work had gone back to his own field. Okay. So when he went to the personage, he noticed that the house was empty no more. Wala nang tao doon. Wala na si, sinong wala doon? Wala na si pastor. Okay? During that time, the Levites, and, and those who served in the temple, they were all, ang ginamit ng salita, they were all gone. No more servers. Okay? And, uh, uh, probably, beloved, I, we cannot say that what the Levites did was, was illegitimate. Mm -hmm. As much as possible, I would like to say that this, this Levites would want to stay, to serve in the temple. But we cannot deny it that during that time, according to Nehemiah, the Levites were all gone into their own fields. Wala na pong mga servers doon sa temple. Okay? Well, uh, when we think of this, Ngayong panahon po natin ay there are times probably that as far as our pastors are concerned that basic necessities would necessitate them to live. Ah. There are uh, some pastors uh, are, I think are now in many of them are in call centers today. Dami. If you go to the call centers, and dami pong ano, daming mga pastors ang nandyan. Okay? There are those who are taking part-time work. But there are also pastors who are so wise, no? That whenever they think of having a wife, ay uh, ang pinipili nila yung ano, yung makakatulong sa kanila. Kaya gusto nila ay nurse or, or teachers or when I was teaching at BBS and I, I told our students, sabi ko, you know what? The only logical uh, partner na para sa inyo, mga pastors, is no, are no other than the Bible women. Uh -huh. Pero sabi, oh, 
de ok but well we are not here to judge beloved but we are here to draw the line that in the bible i there are individuals that have been set aside by the lord to take over the 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 service in the church and in order for them to build the church they should stay there and not leave uh -huh. every time i would have the opportunity to talk to the pastor pastors i always tell them sabi ko alam niyo ang pinakamaganda sa atin if ever uh, we are in a church we should stay in that church for long because i said uh, it, it, it is profitable for us for staying for long in a local church and it is also profitable for the church okay as long as we know that it is god's perfect will for us to be in the church and once we are determined about that i said let's stay for long but there are times when pastors really cannot aguance and they have to leave oh at maraming ganon no well uh, i uh, according to our statistics of baptist bible seminary during our time and um, 60s no there was only about 5% of the graduates of BBS and I that did not stay in the work only 5% 95% of us who graduated from Baptist Bible Seminary stayed in the work only 5% who did not okay all that was hard on our part during that time i remember when uh, i first uh, pastored a church in pasig it was so hard on my part okay i uh, yung yung tiniterhan ko po na personage ay walang toilet and can you imagine na without the toilet no <coughs> rented house without the toilet so i we I, i i had to devise some some means no some ways uh uh no isipin kung how how i did it <laughs> but after several days okay in the doon sa basurahan ay mayroon nang nakalagay don't throw your <laughs> waste here uh -huh. It was hard, really. Uh -huh. But during our time, during our time, I, every time we, uh, uh, during graduation time, we always sing that song. So send a you to labor unrewarded, to serve unpaid, to love uh, and loved, and sought, and know. So. With, with this challenge we go out. Ah. Uh, problema natin ngayon po ay only 5% stay in the work. 95% are out. They do not stay in the work. Uh, and whenever pastors do not stay in the work, I uh the church of god would always suffer uh, the same thing during the time of nehemiah those who were serving the temple were all gone to the field so uh and yan nakita yan ni nehemiah ang problema so the th the second thing that uh, nehemiah did trying to analyze the problem of why the house of god is forsaken 
after uh, after going into the parsonage, he went to the treasurer of the church. Ano nakita po niya sa treasurer? Habi ng treasurer, Sir, di na po binibigay ng mga tao ang kanilang tithes and offerings. Okay? That's why he noticed, according to uh, chapter 13, look at verse, no, verse 10 again. I, I also realized that the portions for the Levites had not been given them. Okay? So, sabi niya, this is another problem in the land of Israel. The Levites were leaving the temple and the people were not giving the tithes. That's why I said at the beginning, beloved, that when we miss to honor the Lord, we are not only affected by that, but the kingdom of God is also affected. Okay? Kasi from the very beginning, in God's economy talaga po ay, that's why he has set aside that particular portion out of the ten that we have, one, sabi niya, one ten is the Lord's. Because in God's mind po, from the very beginning, ay pinalano niya talaga na gamitin ito to build his kingdom on earth. From the very beginning, Okay? When God's people would fail in this, we are affected and God's kingdom is also affected. Now, mabuti kay Nehemiah po na ano, uh, mayroon siyang authority, authority to solve the problem. So that what he did is talagang by, by force, no? Using his authority as the governor to implement God's laws. So what he did is by force, he collected the tithes of the people and restored the tithes of the temple of God. But we cannot do that. Okay? We do not have that uh, authority no, to implement that as what Nehemiah did. Ang atin po authority is to work into the will of God's people in order for them to obey. Yan lang po yung atin. No? And I... I would like to believe, beloved, that if only God's people are uh, faithful in their stewardship, just simply giving what is due to God, there is no reason why yung kingdom ng Diyos ay hindi pwedeng sumulong ng mabilis. Okay? You know why? Kasi I, I want to present to you a, an, uh, yung statistics po taken from the U.S. And I think this represents a worldwide situation. Okay? In uh, 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 among the Southern Baptist Convention Association, this is because sa, sa Southern Baptist recorded ang ano nila, mga offerings nila sa, as an association. Kasi Convention po yan sila. Okay? And according to the statistics, in 1999, within the association, $3 billion have been given to missions agencies. $3 billion. $60 billion were given to local churches. Okay. So three for missions, sixty for local churches. But here is how 
God's people spend their money after uh, that, no? Sabi dito, but $58 billion, $58 billion ay nagpunta sa mga sodas like Pepsi-Cola, Coca-Cola, okay? They call it, ano, sa atin soft drinks, eh. okay? Sa kanilang soda. $58 billion. Na kung inumin mo yun, magdadiabetes ka, etc. etc. But the Christians spend 58 billion. 24 billion for jewelry. Hindi ko sinasabi na bawal yun, ha? Na bumili ng mga ano. Ako mayroon. Ay, sorry. <laughs> okay. And then, 8 billion spend for movies. Sinanood pa sa inyo ng sine. Mahal ngayon, no? Sa Pilipinas. Ayun. Sa aming senior citizen po ay libre yun. Okay? So we cannot be guilty of spending uh, money of the Lord. No? 13 billion dollars spent for uh, chocolate products. Sarap to. 11 billion dollars spend for video games. Video games. Yung mga ano natin, no? 7 billion, siguro lowered na ito ngayon, spend for greeting cards like Christmas cards, etc. Ngayon wala na yun. Text lang. <laughs> 23 billion dollars spend for toys. $91 billion dollars spent for gardens. Yung paganda ng mga garden, mga etc. $91 billion. $40 billion dollars spent for pets. Kumisa masarap pa yung pagkain ng, ano, no? <laughs> ng mga aso kaysa... Okay. Ito. Ayun ko kung ano tayo. 60 billion dollars spent for weight loss. Alright. 50 billion dollars spent for wine and cigarettes. Ang hindi kasali po dito ay loads. Yung phone loads. And in the Philippines, everybody is, ano, has the iPhone or a telephone. And one of the necessities of life ngayon po ay, dati-dati, ang basic necessities ay food, shelter, clothing. Now, it's sh uh, food, shelter, clothing, and load. <laughs> okay? Now, compare this with how the believers spent their money for God's kingdom. Aha. Three billion for missions, 60 billion for local churches. Versus, ang laki po nito. And I think, beloved, if believers are only faithful in their stewardship, in our stewardship, tayo mismo po, if, kung tayo lang, there is no reason why yung kingdom ng Diyos would advance. No reason. Amen? Amen? If only bigyan natin priority yung ano, kingdom ng Panginoon. Hindi in, in uh, what I'm saying is not priority not in the sense that yung we spend uh, uh, we spend our money okay na halos nandun na lahat sa church. Ang ibig lang natin sabihin po is We just simply give God what is due to Him. Amen? Uh -huh. Ibigay lang natin po. I don't think, ano. There, there, will, there will be a problem. Now, thirdly, tinan po natin ito ulit ang situation in chapter 13. First, he went to the personage, right? He found out that 
pastors are gone. Second, he went to the treasure of the church. So, Inalalay ko sa contemporary situation. Habi ng treasure, wala na pong ano, bihira na po ang nagbibigay. Ang, ta- ang tao ng Panginoon ay nag-fail na dito. Okay? Then he went. The next, time, uh, the next place that he went to, if you look at chapter 13, no? Beginning from uh, 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 verse, 20, uh, verse 19, no? He went, he went, ang pinuntan po niya ay yung marketplace where people were doing business. To his surprise, during the Sabbath day, tinaon niya po Sabbath day. Okay? Sa atin ay Friday, no? In the Philippines, it's Sunday. During the Sabbath day, Nehemiah went to the marketplace and to his surprise, ang mga, ang mga tao ng Diyos ay instead of honoring the Lord, okay, by obeying the Sabbath laws, okay, nandun na sila ngayon saan? Trading and doing business during Sabbath day. Prior to that, in chapter 10, they have made the commitment that every Sabbath day, the only place that they should go during Sabbath day will be the temple of God. But this time, wala na sila sa temple. Doon na sila sa palengke. Doing business. Okay? Well, sabi ng, sabi ni Maya, ni Maya po, this is the problem why God's house is forsaken. And we cannot deny it, mga kapatid. If ever, if ever, no? The church of God is forsaken uh, during our time. Okay. One of the reasons would be God's people do not honor the Lord. Do not uh, ano ito, uh, recognize the, the sacredness of the spirit of the Sabbath law. Uh, well, I think it's time for us to uh, remember that out of the six days that God has given us, there should be only one, one day for the Lord. Amen? I told the church in Antipolo, uh, actually, if you look into the Sabbath law in the Old Testament, it is 24 hours yan. Okay? So when you think of the one day, 24 hours, in Israel, they start uh, at 6 o'clock Friday evening. And uh, would close 6 o'clock Saturday evening or afternoon. All in all, it's 24 hours. Okay? To be fair with the Lord, dapat sana yung, yung six days natin ay complete. Correct? That's for us, for us to do our work according to the Bible. But to be fair with the Lord sana, yung one day should be also be complete. In other words, we have to spend the entire 24 hours serving the Lord. But we do not do that. Okay? So I told the church, okay, ito lang ang, ako, ako, ito lang ang uh, compromise natin about Sunday. Uh, in our church, we have two services. First service begins at 7.30. Okay? And then the second service begins at 10 o'clock. So in, it, there are how many hours yon? Three and a half hours. Okay? Now, ang, ang challenge ko sa mga tao is this. During Sunday, all of us should dedicate to the Lord just the three and a half hours instead of 24 hours. 
At sabihin natin sa Panginoon, Sorry Lord, three and a half hours lang muna. Okay? Now, what, the reason why three and a half hours is this. 7.30, the service would end at 9 o'clock. I said, 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock, those, those who attend the first service should stay for the Sunday school. And then those who are attending the 10 o'clock, okay, should be at the church at 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And uh, we meet both those who attend the first and also the second. We meet at 9 o'clock. And during the 9 o'clock, we have the Sunday school. Just three and a half hours yan. 7.30 up to 12, actually up to 12 o'clock. Uh -huh. Para maging ano? Para maging fair sa Panginoon. Kaya lang mga kapatid, problema talaga natin yan. Uh -huh. Why? Masyadong kinukuha natin yung, yung time para sa Panginoon. And once we do that, uh, damage yung ating sarili, damage din yung kingdom ng, ng Panginoon. Uh -huh. So, it is necessary that we, ano, we recognize our, the responsibilities of our uh, stewardship. It is for our own benefit and it is also for the benefit of the kingdom of God. Okay? And uh, if we do that, sabay sabay po tayo, we, we, we make that commitment, I believe that God's, yung God's kingdom niya sa ngayong panahon po ay hindi magkakaroon ng problema. Okay? Hindi pwede sabi, oh, why is the church for second? Uh, well, Ito po yung uh, sa ating ano sa ating I think our the provisions in our constitution in the Philippines are patterned after the provisions in uh, the constitution of the United States of America uh -huh. and in in the provision in our constitution there is the there is the protection of religious beliefs freedom of religion we call it freedom of religion okay but there was a case in uh, in the US at one time when the the supreme court tried to interpret that and tried to identify what is what is that religious belief that should be protected actually by the Constitution. So they tried to define, they tried to draw the line. And so in that decision, they distinguished the difference between belief and conviction. Okay? And according to the U.S. Supreme Court, this is how they tried to uh, qualify the two, no? Sabi nila, uh, Every, uh, every religion has either uh, a belief or a conviction. And according to the interpretation of the Supreme Court, if a person is willing to discuss the negotiation of his faith, then it is merely, sabi niya, it is merely a belief. Okay? But conviction, according to, to the Supreme Court, is uh, something that a person is willing to die for it. Uh -huh. If the threat of death causes one, he said, to change belief, it is not conviction. And the only thing that is protected by the Constitution, sabi nila, is religious conviction and not necessarily religious belief. 
That's their interpretation. Well, beloved, uh, I think uh, we need to have that either belief or conviction. How do you uh, how do you take your stewardship? Uh, it is just simply a belief or a conviction. Okay? Because if it is only a belief, you you can have a concession. Okay? But if it is a conviction, that's non negotiable. I pray that the Lord will help us not just to have that belief that we are stewards in this life, but to have that conviction that we are really stewards in this life. Because if we have that conviction, we will die for it. Amen? Amen. We will die for it. And if we do that, it will benefit us and it will also benefit the kingdom of God. Okay? And may the Lord help FBIC Dubai to have that deep conviction that you are simply stewards of God in this life. Father, we thank you for the example that we could find in your word, what happened in the past, is also relevant to our present situation. We thank you that you have reminded us that from the very beginning, Lord, you have Establish your landmark as far as ownership of things in this life are concerned. And we pray, Lord, that you will uh, give us that deep conviction that we are simply stewards of everything that we possess in this life. And by this, Lord, we can become faithful stewards and honor you with all the things that you have you will be giving us and you have given us help each one of us Lord to be faithful stewards in Jesus name Amen, Amen.